Welcome back to Woodward TV. And today we are going to explore the giant beings known as the Fomorians. These are supernatural giants from Irish mythology that are depicted as malevolent and monstrous beings creating chaos and destruction. In the mythological narratives found in ancient texts, such as the Book of Invasions, these stories document the early settlers of Ireland and their encounters with various groups, including those we typically find in Irish folklore or mythology. Who were the Fomorians? Originating from the sea or distant lands, the Fomorians are often described as having monstrous deformities, such as one eye, one arm, and or one leg representing chaos and disorder, as well as being considered powerful warriors. Sometimes they are described as having the body of a man and the head of a goat. In other descriptions, they are described as being darkly beautiful. Balor, a giant with a deadly eye capable of killing anyone it gazes upon. Conand, a chieftain, who imposes harsh tributes on the Nemedians, and Mork, who continues to trample on the Nemedians after a great battle on Tory Island. The Nemedians, early settlers of Ireland, struggle against the oppressive rule of the Fomorians, are forced to pay a tribute each Samhain, which we now know as modern Halloween, and in the end, the Nemedians are ultimately defeated and scattered across Europe. The Tua de Danan, another group of mythological settlers, also face the Fomorians. In the legendary battle of Mag Turi, the Tua de Danan, led by Lu, defeated the Fomorians and established their rule over Ireland. But the Fomorians are never entirely wiped out continue to exist in mythology. It's interesting because even though many of these stories can be considered myths, even to this day in 2024, with the celebration of Halloween, some still pay tribute to monsters. The Fomorians, or Fomori, are a group of supernatural beings in Irish mythology. They are depicted as malevolent, monstrous giants who oppose the early settlers of Ireland, particularly the Tua de Danan, in a series of mythological battles. They are thought to originate from the sea or distant land. Some traditions describe them as coming from the underworld or as being associated with the forces of nature. The physical descriptions of the Fomorians vary, but they are typically portrayed as giant and terrifying. Now in these stories, there are three popular figures that represent who the Fomorians were. We have Balor, which is one of the most prominent Fomorian leaders. Balor is most famously known for his deadly eye, often referred to as the evil eye or baleful eye. According to legend, this eye had the power to kill or destroy anything it looked upon. The eye was usually kept closed and only opened in battle, causing massive destruction. Next, there was Conan, the chieftain of the Fomorians who came into power over the Namidians. Now, Conand is the giant who imposes a heavy tribute on the Namidians, demanding two thirds of their children, wheat and milk. And this tribute 
was paid and still is, in a sense, annually on Samhain, the Celtic festival marking the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. Keep in mind, these giants were considered to be demonic in nature, and the holiday Halloween seems to be centered around children being taken out to enjoy that holiday, or at least that is one of the excuses people use to justify it. Anyway, there was Mork, another Fomorian chieftain. The Nemidians, led by Nemed, launched an attack on the Fomorian stronghold on Tory Island. They managed to destroy the fortress and kill Conand, but take significant losses in the process. Then Mork arrives with reinforcements after this battle, leading to further conflict and devastation for the Namidians. The Book of Invasions is basically about the historical conflicts between different waves of settlers in ancient Ireland. The stories could be seen as mythological accounts of real historical events, with the Fomorians representing earlier displaced inhabitants. That's what scholars tend to do. They don't want to interpret giants as actual giants. So they just go ahead and say that it's a metaphor or just a way to describe a really strong group of humans. Even though the writings don't say anything about the Fomorians being human. Now, according to the text, Nemed and his followers come from Scythia, an ancient region that is part of modern Eastern Europe and Central Asia. When the Nemedians arrived in Ireland, Nemed and his people settled and began to cultivate the land. And they established their presence by building forts and clearing forests. The Nemedians soon encounter the Fomorians, who at that time were living on the islands surrounding Ireland. The first encounter with the Fomorians was immediately hostile and the leaders of the Fomorians decided they would impose their rule over the Nemidians, and through intimidation and dominance, they forced the Nemidians to pay tribute to them every Samhain. Well, the Nemidians grew tired of this and decided to fight back, which led to the Battle of Tory Island. After the battle, a plague strikes the Nemidians, which dramatically reduces their numbers. The survivors are forced to flee Ireland. They scatter to various parts of Europe, with groups heading to places like Greece, Britain, and Northern Europe. There is a lot more to this mythology, because there were several different groups of settlers in Ireland and several encounters with the Fomorians who they think came from under the sea. But some of the mythos suggested that the Fomorians came from the Middle East and were descendants of Noah's son, Ham. So even in Irish mythology, we somehow end up with Ham carrying the DNA of the Nephilim. Notice that in this legend, there is the idea that the Fomorians were from the sea or of the sea. In a video I uploaded some time ago, I talk about the kingdom of the deep. Basically the idea that a great portion of Satan's kingdom is in the sea. And when you think about it, if demonic spirits are the disembodied souls of the giants before the flood, then their remains would be buried in the seas of the earth or oceans. So yes, a great portion of those spirits would originate from the sea. Here is a clip from that video. The relationship between water and demons is a complex and multifaceted concept that varies across different cultures, religions, belief systems. There 
is no universal or standardized relationship between water and demons. It depends on the specific cultural and religious context. In Christianity, water is often associated with spiritual purification and the casting out of evil influences. Baptism, which involves the use of water, is seen as a rite of initiation into the Christian faith and the washing away of sin. Water is believed to cleanse individuals from the influence of demons and symbolizes a break from the power of evil. In some mythologies and folklore traditions, there are water-dwelling creatures or spirits that are considered malevolent or demonic. These creatures are often seen as guardians or inhabitants of bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, or seas. They may be believed to bring misfortune or danger to those who encounter them. In some occult and esoteric practices, water is used as a component in rituals for summoning or invoking spiritual entities, including demons. Water may be seen as a conduit for communication with otherworldly beings and as a means to gain power or knowledge. Water is sometimes used in exorcism rituals across various cultures and religions. Holy water, in particular, is believed to have the power to drive out demons and evil spirits. The act of sprinkling or anointing with holy water is intended to purify and protect individuals or spaces from demonic influence. Water is often used symbolically in religious and mythological narratives to represent the chaotic and uncontrollable forces of nature. In some cases, these forces may be personified as demonic entities. Water's unpredictability and ability to bring destruction, you know, floods, things of that nature, can be associated with negative or malevolent forces in certain contexts. Water is sometimes used as a protective barrier against demons or malevolent entities. For example, in some cultures, placing a bowl of salt water near entrances is believed to ward off evil spirits. Some belief systems use running water or mirrors the reflection you know of water to prevent demons from entering a space different cultures and belief systems have distinct interpretations of the significance of water in relation to supernatural entities in many cases the role of water in these contexts is symbolic ritualistic or mythological rather than a direct physical interaction between water and demons in the great flood story, everything perished, but Noah and his family. The entire earth was supposedly covered in water. And so today, the grave of these giants or the Nephilim would partly, if not mostly, be in the seas. That means the disembodied spirits, along with a countless number of fallen angels that fell with Satan, are out there in the deep in the darkness scholars believe that the book of invasions is partly just made up mythology and partly taken from the bible but there can be only one true history of the world so therefore they didn't have to take those stories from the bible it's just a retelling of what actually happened or what they were told in oral tradition. And if the Tower of Babel story is true, then that means at that point, those stories would be told over and over again in different languages. So these characters would, of course, have different names and perhaps different descriptions. It doesn't mean that all these different cultures are making up the stories about giants. For example, the meaning 
of the name Fomorians changed over time and ended up just as a description for pirates. So let me know what you all think in the comments below if this is something that actually happened as described in the Book of Invasions and many, many other ancient texts around the world. Or should we just dismiss it because of, you know, reasons? That's going to be all for now, and there is more to come. Check out that video on the Kingdom of the Deep as my recommended video of the day. Everyone have a great day, and as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon. Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet everyday exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch tone essentials Pure Body Extra Colloidal Zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy to use spray so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of Zeolite today because now is the time to live your best life.